Hey guys, Ryden here, and welcome to Ace Attorney Apollo Justice. So, for those of you who went back on my channel and found that I did the original Ace Attorney game, I don't know why I'm screen shaking there, that's weird. Uh, the reason it's not finished is just because I had already played through the main Ace Attorney trilogy by the time I got around to it, and I realized that replaying Ace Attorney games isn't as fun as I thought it'd be. But, here we are with something blind, and you guys don't need to worry, especially if you're newcomers, because this game was designed with the mindset that newcomers could come in, because the main character is not Phoenix this time. It is someone else, and these are kind of side stories, just like Edgeworth Investigations. So, if you're still kind of new to the series, you could probably watch some of those, like, few episodes I have up, or go watch something on it, or even just start here playing, and you'll enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy it if you really do like quirky stuff. So anyways, without further ado, let's get started. I have never played this game. I don't know anything about it aside from there's Apollo and he does things. That's really it. <laughs> Turn about Trump. That's an interesting title. Okay. I also believe that this was the first Ace Attorney game to come out on the DS. Or that was made specifically for the DS, so the sprite work's supposed to be a bit better. You lose. I don't know what's going on. Ugh. Oh, it looks like we have a bottle murder. Alright. Well, from what I've heard, the first and last cases in this game... I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him hard. Me? Please. The cop should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? Should it come to what? I don't understand what's happening. April 20th, 9.37 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Apollo. Panicked. Palm sweaty. I can admit it. I'm nervous. I don't know what kind of voice to give Apollo because Phoenix is just going to have my voice because I think it's a bit easier to do it that way, but I think I might just give Apollo mine also, but we'll see how this works. I don't know what kind of character he is. Ah, good morning. Whoa, who's this dude? Uh, good, good morning, sir. You look tense. Wound up tight. Well wound up, sir, no! No, I'm, I'm loose, I'm just fine. That screeching noise, is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected. Your first trial and it's a homicide. I guess justice doesn't start small, eh? I I'm fine. It's fine. It's fine. Really? Because you created a puddle of sweat on the floor and there's a new biome inhabiting it. I got up at 5am to do my Chords of Steel voice workout. I'm fi- What kind of voice workout is that? Ah, uh, that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality in your screech. Oh, <laughs> I overdid it again. Oh god, he has that Edgeworth thing going on. As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down if you get my drift. Dr drift, gotten, gotten, sir. I'm all over that drift. <laughs> Apollo is so freaking nervous, it's ridiculous. As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Yes, yes, I'm fine, sir. Oh, and one more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. <laughs> People might take you the wrong way. Oh. <laughs> I don't understand what that was about. I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. Introduce, I don't, okay. My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm the new ace attorney. Get out of here, Phoenix. Today is my first trial. 
No, not that I'm worried or anything. What, what? This guy is... I think he's less adequate than Phoenix was. The defendant has been accused of murder. What a surprise. My boss wants to help him out, of course, and so do I. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him. No way. Huh. Oh, what? Uh, who? Wait, wait. Is that who I think it is? Hold on. Whoa! Um... Good, uh, morning? Morning, it's all up to you today. First trial, nervous, meeting him, cardiac arrest. <laughs> I think that might be Phoenix. Oh my god, what happened to you? Just what happened to you, man? Dots? I, I think I'm supposed to say something, uh, help? <laughs> so you're... Fine, fine, I'm fine. There's no problem. I'm fine. Ah, uh, Mr. Fine is... <laughs> uh... I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, are you sure you're okay? With, I mean, with me? What, what's with Phoenix? I think this is Phoenix. I've seen pictures before of this saying this guy was Phoenix, but... I'm having a hard time believing this. I mean, look at the scruff on his face and the freaking hair. <laughs> like, it's not working. Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney. And he's your friend, so why? Y you'll see. Huh? You can do it. Be confident. Do it! Do it, Apollo! Do it! Just start screaming out. I get it. I get it. Calm down. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you, I mean. I mean, I... It's time. Shall we? Y yes sir Phoenix seems so different right now. Like, this is a completely different character. If that is him, I'm having a really hard time believing it is. I feel like what I saw was just a lie. First trial, here comes justice. Oh god, don't tell me this guy has like a justice... He has like a justice boner. I've seen enough of that. Between Akame Got Kill and Arthur, I think I've seen enough of justice. The court is now in session. Ah, oh, the judge. <laughs> it is me, Tutorial Man. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Uh, the defense is, uh, fine. I mean, ready, Your Honor. Oh god, this is gonna go great, isn't it? M mine going blank. Don't panic. Oh, too late. <laughs> Your name was Mr. Justice? And this is your first trial? Yeah, yes, your honor. But I'm fine, really. How does he get his hair to do that? Are you sure your voice sounds a bit strained? Uh, uh, <laughs> wow, I think he sweats a bit worse than Phoenix does. Uh, Mr. Gavin? Yes, your honor. What the hell? I thought that was gonna be like his... What? Yes, your honor? I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. That was my intention, yes. However, a defense attorney must always cede his client's wishes. And my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course he wants justice. <laughs> what? But entrust the case to this greenhorn? Why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you are the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience, fine. But does he have cords of steel? <laughs> uh, then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. Oh, hey. I feel like I, even if this is actually Phoenix, I have to give him like a super raspy voice just for this game. Ellipses? No, no, no. This is a truly unfortunate turn of events. No one will have to deal with these hour-long bullshit court sessions. Hope he goes to jail. <laughs> I'm sorry, we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see. 
Oh, wait, now that's a judge. Long time no see, Mr. Wright. I knew it. Oh my god, what happened to you? Phoenix. Mr. Wright, stop the crack. I, I can't, man. I'm not doing anything wrong. <laughs> Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright. Piano play- what? Piano player? I don't remember any record of this. Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Payne. To think I saw you enter this room as a fresh attorney, and now I'll see you leave- uh, la, la. <laughs> I'll see you leave in chains. Ah, uh, Winston Payne, subtle as ever, I see. He just, he just replaces with a new wig every single game he appears in, doesn't he? <laughs> What's with that little tiny bit of hair? Ahem. The crime occurred at the Borched Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim a customer, and he hit him wham on the head. Smack killed him cold. Hmm, a customer at the restaurant, you say? And the defendant, you say he was? The pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright. A pianist? This is the weapon that took the victim's life, a bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. We gotta give him, like, a really nasally voice, like I kinda did with Grail, like, yeah. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. Deadly bottle added to the court record. I feel like the judge can just dub the evidence whatever he sees fit, and it's just added like that. Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. I don't- of course, I wouldn't- oh god. This is hard tutorial level again, isn't it? Make a practice of checking it frequently. The court record? Right, I've heard of that. <laughs> Use the court record button to look at the evidence so far. I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Right, the court record button. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action. Some hands-on action. Stop touching me, Apollo. But I'm scared. <laughs> so the victim was a customer at this restaurant. But just who was this um shady Smith <laughs> fellow? We believe he was a traveler, Your Honor. A traveler? According to his passport, he could have been out of the cent the country for a number of years. He had only returned to this country recently, though his place of residence is unclear. He had come so he had some sort of connection with the defendant. That too is unclear at the present, Your Honor. We believe they first met at the Borscht Bowl Club on the night of the crime. If they had only just met, then why murder? Perhaps the victim slighted the defendant's piano playing. Yeah, that, that's that's a perfectly good reason to come up with. You're a bad piano player. I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good conclusion to jump to. That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. At least not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. Whoa. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second. Isn't poker gambling? That's a crime in and of itself. Indeed, it appears our defendant has fallen to become the basest sort of criminal. It's true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that, a game, in a pur in the purest sense, a competition, your honor. A competition? Oh god, something just fell. <laughs> yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards with their backs wraithed in blue flame know its final outcome. Damn, you're making poker sound really fun. Hmm. Uh, come again? The cards on the table had blue backs, Your Honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic <laughs> was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those present. 
starts reciting all of green eggs and ham. I don't know anything else, okay? And impress women. That will be our first order of business here, then. To find out more about this fatal game of cards. Why does this hat say Papa? <laughs> Why? Did he have to get that at, like, a... I, I don't know how... Is he in poverty at this moment? Is that what's happening? Very well, defendant. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held that night. The night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it. My first trial. Here goes nothing. Says like the first four words. So, here I was at the scene of the- OBJECTION! <laughs> what, what's wrong, Mr. Apollo? JUSTICE! You can't just present justice as every single piece of evidence, Mr. Apollo. I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on interested customers over the, at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the main, club's main attractions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy. Hmm. A pianist who can't play piano. Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. Oh, it's just... Oh, God. I love how even he sounds. He's like, dear God, can you please... Ugh. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Well, right, your honor. My first cross-examination. Don't blow it. Are you all right? You're sweating bullets. Bullet bullets where? <laughs> it's a figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir. <laughs> You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times, though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? What to do? Should I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher on cross-examination? No, thank you. No need for help here, sir. I think I've got this one covered. I think you'd better do more than think. You know it, or do you not? You know it, or you do not? I'm fine. The cords of steel are ready for battle. My weapons press and present. Find any inconsistencies, any lies in the testimony, and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it, know it, do it. Inconsistencies. Lies. Phoenix Wright? As if Phoenix Wright would ever lie. And it's up to me to prove it. The cross- the defense may begin the cross-examination. Oh god. I want to see that every single sentence in this testimony is an absolute lie. I'm a pianist by trade, yeah, I can really play. Okay, so first I want to see what's up here. I have a feeling that... It's going to have something to do with this picture. He said that they play with two decks of cards, but... It looks like there's only one on the table right here. Like, there's the main deck right here, and it's kind of shuffled out. But I can't really say that. I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. I'll just start... Uh, maybe I'll just start pressing on everything just so we can get some extra dialogue. Hold it! You can hardly play? Oh, I play sometimes when customers demand it. So I play them one song. That's usually all they want. Was that supposed to be a boast just now? <laughs> the title of the pianist is A Mask. A respectable face I wear for the world at large. Then why are you really at the Borst Bowl Club? <laughs> My real job is... okay. They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I am a professional after all. Since when? <laughs> bah, do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Yes. Your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. <laughs> God, Phoenix. <laughs> What's wrong with you? When did you become such a jerk? What? what? 
I've played poker for seven years and that's seven? How how big is the gap between the second and third game? Because this happens right after uh, Justice and before Trials and Tribulations. So that's a seven year gap? What the hell? <laughs> he didn't even look that much older. And I've never lost once. What? You see what you see why the customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. Wait, you've never lost once, not even one time. As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once. Is that even possible? Well, you're putting yourself in a worse spot if you say you've never lost, because then what happens if they beat you and then you just immediately killed them? That's not really... whatever. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The room in the crime scene photo is an attraction? It has quite a history, actually. The Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day black market. Phoenix just like, I'll trade you my attorney badge for an AK-47. Oh, in the past, things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice it to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room. A smoky room, gabbling hoods? You know, just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. <laughs> The bosses gather around the ta- oh wait, the bosses gather around the table, cutting deals safe from eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through a small window. I can practically picture it now. The window does look like it would be pretty good for keeping a lookout, but little else. The room had a few other tricks to it. Thought it was common knowledge to, the, to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it is all just good, clean fun. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks. I'm gonna press him on that because I feel like... Two decks of cards? A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some cards lying scattered on the floor. Precisely, cards on the table, cards upon the floor. Each one forming a complete deck. A crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. What What is with this guy? Is he just like poetry man? <laughs> I don't really know. Incidentally, we use two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards is red, and the other is blue. Hmm. As I recall in poker, you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. Heh. <laughs> yes. A game of hands. Jazz hands. What? <laughs> this competition you're talking about. I believe the court understands the, nation, the nature of this game sufficiently. Th that's right. It was a simple game after all. Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment that crime occurred. Yet you claim no connection to the crime. Now that's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about that competition last- wait. I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, your honor. Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. Ugh, I completely let that one slip by. Don't despair yet, Justice. S sir Right, there's something I'd like to make clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand. And I'd like to hear it from you. Sure, why not? Very well, the defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press, and I've got myself a whole new testimony. Look at him, he's all full of hope and justice and all that. 
I plead silence regarding the murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. S silence? The defendant has the right to refuse to testify. I haven't forgotten everything about the law. But why? That clearly puts you at a disadvantage. And it's your job to turn that around in our favor, yes? Great. Like, I didn't have enough to do already. <laughs> Justice, didn't you detect anything odd about that testimony? Huh? Wait, something he said did ring a little strangely. Just one thing, now what was it? When you figure it out, I suggest you pre start presenting evidence. Evidence that contradicts the testimony. A contradiction in Mr. Wright's testimony? But why? There could be no contradictions. He's Phoenix Wright, he's God, he's Senpai. <laughs> I'd love to see him just like, Senpai, no, it's me, and he's just, what, what? Do I hear something? I'd better check the court record. I can't imagine Mr. Wright lying in a testimony. Isn't it a little early to be jumping to conclusions? This is your first cross-examination. Take it slow. If you need more information, don't forget to press. R right, right, I got it. I'm fine. Time to listen to that testimony again. Yeah, no, no. So what do we have anyway? We have Apollo's ace attorney's badge, which looks exactly the same. We have this autopsy report that says the time of death was around 2 a.m. April 17th. Death caused by single blow to the forehead. We have the picture of the crime scene. We have the deadly bottle. The grape juice bottle used as the murder weapon bears the defendant's... Wait. Bears the defendant Mr. Wright's prince. Okay, so that's an easy one. This has to be one of the easiest ones ever. So it is a game, our customers are happy. Yeah, but you're lying, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry. He has an interesting voice. So you say you didn't touch the murder weapon. This grape juice bottle. Right? So I said... Ugh. I know, Apollo. I'm feeling the exact same way right now. Something the matter, Mr. Justice? Hehehe. <laughs> <laughs> the hair flip. I am goddamn fabulous. All the ladies want my milkshakes. Uh, I think that's the other way around. No, no, they want them badly. Too bad after our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see, and it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. Objection <laughs> in slow motion. No need to shout, Mr. Justice. I can hear you just fine. God, I get enough of this from Phoenix. <laughs> oh, he's like, oh man. <laughs> Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears and our case. <laughs> but what about my cords of steel? I practice all morning. See, listen. You are the oceans. Great, please stop, for the love of God. Any, any, anyway. So what's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prince alone can't prove he did- Objection! Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down! Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted. And there can only be one reason for that. Yes. Fabulous hair. To brain... Wait, to brain someone with the bottle. I've never heard that expression used ever. <laughs> that expression is too good. Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh, I know that was him talking. Oh, I see no problem, Justice. Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything, you'll see. Defendant, can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? Uh, I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. Phoenix, you're being really helpful right now, aren't you? You're being amazingly helpful. For now. Hmm, not very cooperative, are you? 
This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be a reason. Objection. Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright, but still that... Really? Um, yes, well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from, a ne from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Doesn't everyone's cell phone in this entire series have, like, the steel samurai ringtone to it? Near the scene? Let's take a look at the diagram of the murder scene, shall we? Ah, oh, shit, God out spilled his coffee on it again. The victim was murdered in a small room in a basement two floors down from ground level. Okay. Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in the hallway to go above ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. I see, and this is the phone that made the call. Can we just check, like, his call history and make sure? <laughs> The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime, if he so chose. Yet he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. And you claim he is being uncooperative. Uh, <coughs> nice save, Mr. Gavin. Better not waste this. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. T toyed I assure you, I, I... No. No one is more serious about... Is that what you said, bitch? <laughs> the defendant was in the room the very moment the crime occurred. How can you possibly know this? That's a good question. How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a decisive witness. He he he. You're as good as they say you are. So someone else was in- wait, so someone else was in the room at the night of the crime. That must mean they witnessed the crime. Everything up till now has been a warm-up, Justice. Are you ready? I hope that Gavin and uh, Edgeworth don't meet each other because right now they have the same voice. And that'll be a very confusing conversation. Very well, the prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. And who made that? What? Little Russian tea girl? Is that what this is? The witness will state her name and profession. Hold on just a moment. Where, where's the witness? <laughs> Are you serious? She's wearing a giant puffy jacket. Where is she? I can't see her. I surmise that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic looking horns. <laughs> Ugh, so I, use, so I used a little hair gel. Relax, people. <laughs> Have no fear of any horns point in your direction. This court will cut them off. Y you're sure? I swear it on my gavel. Please, come out. <laughs> Isn't violence against hair a crime, Your Honor? Well, if you're sure it's okay... Ahem, now, the prosecution. What? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Would the prosecution care to explain the witnesses, um... Paraphernalia. <laughs> uh, yes. She is a professional, Your Honor. These are merely her tools of trade. And that would be... My name is... Oh yeah, of course, it's a Russian girl named Olga. My name is Olga Orly. I'm employed as a waitress in the Borscht Bowl Club restaurant. Then why the camera? Of course, it's my pride to serve Miss... Wait, to serve Borscht, that is... I didn't get to read that. But I also perform how it's... Wait, what? How it is said. Other sir... Oh, she actually has like a Russian... I should give her a Russian accent. But I also perform how is it said. Other service. I get it now. I take it one of these other services is taking customers pictures? Da da. Like, for example, this one. <laughs> Great. Th that's the defendant! Indeed. On the night of the murder. Man in the white hat. 
is one who has gone kaput. <laughs> Indeed. That is the victim. Order, order. This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop onto our laps. It is same way as I drop cold balls of borscht on laps of customers casually. Hmm. And the court will casually accept this new evidence. I must be hot as hell to be sitting there in that freaking jacket. Like, I had to serve uh, jury duty the other day and it was not a comfortable room. Now, witness, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in a room. The hideout. <laughs> Just change the spelling a little. The hideout, we call it. Excuse me, the hideout? It is a room where famous gangster bad guy <laughs> was arrested. Is a room where murder took place. What? Your look of utter surprise is lovely. I will post by courtroom door and later for you. And then later I will post nudes on the Facebook. Apollo's like, please, please, no. Wait, how'd you even get those? Like, I followed you home. <laughs> da da, photos will be numbered and you will write which ones you want copy of. So there were three people in the room at the time of the crime. The victim, Shady Smith, and Mr. Wright. Olga Orly, our witness. And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means... Ah, uh, I see where this is going. Very well, witness. You will testify to the court about that night's F events. Oh yeah, another testimony. That fateful night. That night, customer asked me to deal cards for game. It was cold, both players played with hats on, Da. <laughs> the victim, he plays whole time with his hand on locket at his neck. Then last hand is done, but something terrible has happened, Da. That man flew at victim and is strangling him to death. Wow, I... I, I hope... Okay. Incidentally, who won the game? Isn't it obvious? The winner was the victim, Mr. Smith. Objection! Objection! That, that, that's ridiculous, uh, because Mr. Wright can't lose. <laughs> um, justice. Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection. But he hadn't lost in seven years. Take it from me, kid, it happens. I didn't lose a case my first seven years as a prosecutor either. Incidentally, I have some evidence here. Okay, so is this showing? These poker chips are... Th wait, these, po these are the poker chips as they lay at the very moment of the crime. So I see the blue deck. I don't see any of the red cards, which must mean that the red cards are being played, but if the blue deck's on the table, does that not mean it's being played? Whatever. The hand and chips on this side belong to the defendant, Mr. Wright. Those on the far side belong to the victim, Mr. Smith. Chips, you say? Ah, I mean, yes! Imagine that poker is war. In home country, poker war effort. Um, I didn't mean it like many friends die in poker war. Your hand is your army, and the chips are the spoils. I, I know that. After all, in my youth, I was known as the poker head of courtroom number three. <laughs> I think he means poker face. Hmm, looking at this picture, it does seem that most of the chips are on the victim's side of the table. Chip photo. Chip photo added to the court record. Great. Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. <laughs> His freaking, like, Persona-style portrait looks so stupid. <laughs> that... Ugh. Who was it? You were dealing cards, do you do this often? Duh, I am doing this. If customer wishes it, I serve anything. Borscht, cards, more borscht. It is my work. Good to hear of a place that hasn't forgotten the meaning of service. Welcome you to Borscht Bowl Club, where Borscht is warm as the waitresses. I don't... 
know what that's supposed to mean. Thank you for not handing out flyers during the cross-examination. <laughs> How is it cold in the basement? It's already April. How could it be cold? At Borscht Bowl Club, we have pride on authentic rustic rush. Wait, on authentic rustic Russian restaurant theme. Outside of city in spring, but inside it is always as cold as Mother Russia. No way, I'm going there. <laughs> when it comes to hot borscht, cold is best seasoning, da. Oh, she's so adorable. I don't, I don't want her to be the freaking murderer. Like God. <laughs> The victim, he plays whole time with hand on locket at his neck. I feel like that's very important. His locket? I believe it was good luck charm, da? He gripped it many times as he played that night. Yes, he must have felt as though it might carry him to the moon and to the stars. Though if it were f small enough to fit around his neck, it wouldn't have much lift. Um, the defense would like to cl would like a clarification. This is the locket we're talking about. I mean, a pendant with a picture in it, right? Not a rocket. Of course I knew that. <laughs> it was probably a pendant shaped like a rocket, and that's why she called it that. No, a locket's a locket. Oh, oh, I couldn't even... It's considered bad form to poke fun at the heart of hearing in our testimony. Hard of hearing or hard of understanding. So what happened next? Then last hand is done, but something terrible happened. Da. The man flew at victim strangling. Well, th like, this is kind of... I don't know. Like, something seems wrong with his statement only because he was killed with the bottle. But just because he was strangling them does not mean that... He strangled him before the bottle. So I'm going to press her on that and see if I can find out anything. But the defendant would never... That's your press, Apollo. That's it. Well, the defendant would never do such a thing. Eek! Well, now, I can't say I've ever heard the defense try this tactic. If possible, please refrain from embarrassing me. Why would anyone do something like this over a game of poker? Perhaps it is because defendant lost game. Yes, a crushing defeat for a man undefeated. So it is always... Wait, so it is... So it always is with men like him. Winners are sore losers. Oh, how the mighty fall. Oh, yeah. You're the one to talk. <laughs> Go ahead. I believe you know what you what it is you need to do. All right, sir, leave it to me. Sir, yes, sir. Apollo of the Gavin military... Can you stop and just present the goddamn evidence for once? There were only three people in the room at the time of the murder. The victim, Shady Smith, Mr. Wright, and... Mr. Wright isn't the killer. I've got you now, Orly. I don't want it to be her, but... Okay, let's look at some of this evidence, I guess. Something terrible has happened. We actually didn't press this statement, so we're going to do it once. Something terrible? Eek! The defense will refrain from needless shouting. <laughs> uh, sorry. I need to seriously reconsider this vocal training thing. Now, Miss Orley, can you tell us what happened? Oh, I was so frightened. Da, I trembled with fear. Mr. Wright isn't saying a word, and it's pissing me off a little. Defendant victim's chips when crime took place touched the check button. Shit, I mean to... I didn't mean to press that. I pushed the wrong button. I have weird buttons mapped on my keyboard. I was actually trying to check the evidence. It does? I don't see anything contradictory. Um, you sure about that? Objection overruled. Try to think before you make accusations, Mr. Justice, or accidentally push the wrong button. Uh, it didn't go so well. Go ahead. I believe what it is you, know you need to do. We already did this. Okay, so now I want to check the court record and not accidentally present the evidence. This was just them talking to each other. And this, these bottles are near Phoenix, so... The time of death is around caused by a single blow to the forehead. I mean, it's Ace Attorney, so I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say this is what we have to present. But, like, 
Just because he was hit in the forehead with a bottle does not mean he was not strangled first. Okay. Present. Um, I'm just gonna... Man fluid the victim strangling him to death. I mean, that's not the cause of death, obviously, but okay. Oh, really? Strangled, you say? That's odd. Duh. Normal customers only choke on borscht. <laughs> no, I mean, this report shows that the victim died of a blow to the head. Huh? Miss Orley, really now? Did you witness the crime? Eek! <laughs> Damn, you got some skills! Hmm... Looking at the picture, it doesn't seem like he was hit. And he's still wearing his hat and everything. Yes, it is a fact that he was hit, Your Honor. Here's a photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Will, that's quite shocking, isn't it? He's the Avatar! God damn it, Mr. Wright, you killed the Avatar! <laughs> His head certainly was hit. Crime photo 2 added to the court record. But, but I have seen it happen. The defendant, he lunged at victim, his neck. Oh really, Miss Orley? I think I've caught you in your own lie this time. Justice? I admire your enthusiasm, but perhaps you should think this through once more. What? what do you mean? I found a contradiction. There's one thing in her testimony that troubles me. Very well. It seems we should continue the cross-examination. There's a such thing as thinking too much. This horse is dead, let's stop beating it. <laughs> There's such a thing as thinking aloud too much, too. That night, the customer asked me to deal cards for the game. You were dealing cards? Do you do this? Oh wait, we already asked this, this is the same testimony. Something else in her testimony that does not make sense. Did she fix it in any way? What just happened? The victim, he plays the whole time with his hand on lock at his neck. And something terrible has happened. As the defendant tried to strangle him, he hit him with the bottle. You didn't say anything about hitting before. S -s 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 so sorry, I must be forgetting this da. Witness, you will take greater care with your testimony. Oh, da, da, I'm sorry, Your Honor. And that clears up this discrepancy with the autopsy report, I believe. The defendant made to strangle his victim, then changed his mind. And chose a rather simpler, blunter means to do the job. Yes, that sums it up nicely. So he strangled him, then hit him? Something's fishy about all this. Go ahead, I believe you know what it is you need to do. Right, sir, leave it to me. Only three people in the- yes, I know. Victim, Shady Smith, Mr. Wright, and her. Yes, I know. Apollo. I know. So it was... Crime photo two, check. There's a blow on his forehead. I'm not saying the contradiction here, though. Like, we have this new photo, which is great. There's nothing that really... ...says anything about the photo, except the fact that, like... ...the blood is running backwards on his head, so his head was back. But that doesn't really say anything. So I don't really see anything odd there. Hmm. I don't know, actually. Did she say anything else aside from that? I think that was it. He plays with the hand... Wait, he plays with his hand on his locket. On his neck. Oh wait, does he not have the locket on his neck? Is that it? Oh, it's gone, yeah. You know, there was one curious part in her testimony, just like Mr. Gavin said. But what does it mean? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain what it is that you're thinking so intensely about? Recall the testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with his hand on locket at his neck. Wink, wink. I believe she said. 
I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. No, but look at this photograph. Do you see the locket on the victim's neck? Well done, Justice. I'm impressed. I knew you'd be able to handle this. But, but what does this mean? If we were to believe this as the witness's testimony as is, then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. Lockets don't just disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, someone must have taken it off, no? Taken it off? Wait, you don't mean... The defendant wasn't strangling the victim at all. He was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Ah! Oh. Eh? Defendant, what do you have to say to this? Are you still gonna say absolutely nothing? Say. Yes? I just noticed this, but... You have something hanging around your neck, don't you? Oh. You mean this? Yeah, it's a locket. But the photograph inside. A photo of my daughter. C come again? Mr. Wright, you have a daughter? We confirmed it at the time of the arrest. The picture in the locket is indeed Mr. Wright's daughter. So Mr. Wright has a locket too. Why don't I buy that this is just a coincidence? Well now, if the results of this poker game had led to the murder, perhaps we should hear a bit more about the outcome of the game. Further testimony won't really be necessary. It's clear the defendant lost badly. What's wrong with you, little Russian lady? Oh, nothing. I just, I just sleep on vodka. That's it. Miss Orley. You will testify to the court about the game played between the victim and the defendant. Duh. Serious competition. The game began with 3,500 points in chips for each man. House chips come in two sizes, small and large. The one who was winning that was the victim. For last hand, defendant play with all chips on table and lose. The moment the loss was decided, defendant grabs bottle from table and... Indeed, looking at this picture... It would seem to be a very one-sided game. As the court knows, poker was the defense's life, the defendant's life. Failure must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Ah, oh, how many times have I heard these words? I done it in a fit of anger, your honor, and now I regret what I've done. A common tale, but true. Me thinks the judge watches too many old court movies. Mr. Wright said he hasn't lost in seven years, so this testimony must be wrong. The game began with 3,500 point in chips for each man. Are those the usual starting points? Were there any special rules used? No, not special. Usual game. Usual rules. If each man began with 3,500 points total, then the total would be, hmm, um, exactly six, no, 7,000 points. Great job, your honor. Please, this isn't calculus, it's not even long division. House chips come in two sizes, small and large. Are the chips in this photo all the chips that were used? Da, da, of course. Hmm? Hmm? Just starts grunting at her and is like, please stop. Press harder. Maybe you could explain a bit about these chips. I explain? What is there to ex be explained? Poker chips are poker chips. They're not fish in chips, not a chip off the old block. Not oh my god. Thanks. Now I've pressed her, I'd better ask something. What are these chips worth? 
Are they in dollars or rubles even? Niet. As I have been saying before, it was game, not gambling. Hard, perhaps, for capitalists to understand. Two types of chip. 100 point chip and 1000 point chip. It is not money, da. Justice. Sir! Don't you find her comment... interesting? In more ways than one, sir. I've added it to her testimony myself. Well, does the defense want to add... Wait. Well, does the defense want to add the witness... Yes. Add that to the testimony. Yes, I do think this deserves further scrutiny. Add it to the testimony. I wish I knew where I was going with this. Very well, witness. If you would be so kind. Da, da, your honor. One kind of chip is worth 100 points. Other kind is worth 1,000. Two kinds in all. Let's see how quickly we can prove this wrong. Uh, it's the picture with the poker chips on the table. 100 and 1,000. Imagine the 1,000 one would be bigger. Which side does it say? Uh, defendant and victim's chips. So this side's... Okay, okay. 100 points and 1,000, two kinds in all, and I do only see two kinds on the table. But... If these are all 100s, and these are 1,000s... I bet if I press this, I could figure out which kind of chip is which. And that might help a little bit. Mr. Gavin said this testimony was important. To be honest, I have no idea why. Mr. Justice! Do the court a favor and think of what you want to say before raising your hand. We are not in kindergarten. Uh, sorry, I'm fine. Better think of something to ask. Quick. Um, the two types of chips. Da? Um, the smaller ones are a hundred and big ones... Oh, God, I'm, I'm stuck in her accent. Uh, right, right, of course. Ha. Huh. Don't waste our time. Uh, is that all? Um, yeah. Great, Mr. Gavin made me stop her, and now I'm the one who looks dumb. Oh, Justice. Please try not to embarrass me like God. He is... He is up there. Like, I thought, like, Mia was a pretty good, like, teacher type of figure, but he's just on it. Huh? Who, me? There's a clear contradiction in the information you have in your hands. What? It's a simple matter of calculation. Go on, try it. We're not in kindergarten, after all. Calculation. The one who was winning, Dot, was the victim. So I hate to cut it short here, but this episode's getting quite long, and for long for me is over an hour. But, um, thank you for watching. I hope you really are enjoying this. It's taking a while to get used to after being, after doing like Fire Emblem for so long, where I'm sitting here and managing units and not just reading lines of dialogue, but I do really enjoy this. So, go ahead and hit subscribe and become a member of the Dust Brigade. And if you like the video, please leave a like. And if you dislike it, leave dislike. I won't mind. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Right and out.